Final Cut Pro is packed with a lot of exciting features that really set it apart from other video editing apps like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. Now, of course, a lot of Final Cut Pro editors have a running list of feature requests they'd like to see Apple add to Final Cut Pro, but let's save that for another video. The first feature I wanna talk about that I think is pretty dang cool, but not a lot of beginner or intermediate editors know about this is the event viewer. This feature is of particular interest to those of you who have spent a lot of time editing in Final Cut Pro 7, Avid Media Composer, and Premiere Pro. And if you're switching from Premiere Pro, the event viewer is a feature that might ease that transition just a bit. So what's the event viewer? I'm just gonna describe it as the Final Cut Pro user guide describes it. Link, of course, in the description to view the event viewer feature. Sometimes you may need two viewers so that you can play back and skim event clips separately from timeline clips. The event viewer is a separate video display that appears next to the main viewer. With the event viewer and the viewer open, you can display two clips at the same time, one from the browser and one from the timeline. You use the event viewer to play clips in the browser only. Playback and adjustment controls are identical in the viewer and the event viewer. Other viewer-related operations, including on-screen controls and built-in effects, are done with the main viewer. Personally, I don't use this feature really ever, but I have recommended it to quite a few Premiere Pro editors who want to uh, crossfade into Final Cut Pro. It's a little known feature that for some might be valuable, so check it out and see if it's something that enhances your workflow. For those of you editing on laptops, it could certainly create a crowded user interface, but if you're like me and editing using four monitors, you've got plenty of real estate to add in the event viewer. If you're already using the event viewer, let me know why you love it down in the comments. Now, speaking of things that aren't well known regarding our beloved Apple products, did you know that the 13-inch M1 MacBook cannot connect to three displays? What if you want to run your MacBook in clamshell mode and use multiple external displays to get a desktop experience? Well, that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Anchor, and their new 563 10-in-1 docking station for M1 MacBooks. Take a look at all the ports on this dock. There's Ethernet, DisplayPort, two HDMI ports, and a USB-C port that allows you to connect to your Apple Silicon Mac and provide up to 100 watts of power delivery. On the front, there's two USB-A 2.0 ports for input devices like a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard, a USB-A 3.1 Gen 1 port, a USB-C 3.1 Gen port, and a headphone microphone combo jack. Now that's a lot of connectivity. And this is the kind of connectivity that makes your Apple Silicon Notebook a dual threat. You can keep it portable and use it as a great mobile computer, or you can pair it with the Anchor 563 10-in-1 docking station to turn it into a powerful desktop-style computer with up to three external displays. You heard correctly, you can now connect your M1 MacBook to three external displays with 4K at 30Hz through HDMI 1 and 1080p through HDMI 2 and DisplayPort. This docking station uses DisplayLink technology to send media to multiple monitors, and while you're doing all this, you're able to charge your MacBook. The 563 docking station takes what used to be three different connections I'd have to make to my MacBook Pro before a live stream and condenses them down to just one. And you know this channel is all about efficiency and productivity, so a product like Anchor's 563 10-in-1 docking station is a perfect solution for those of you looking to add multiple displays to your M1 MacBook or, like me, to streamline the connections to your new M1 MacBook Pro. Check out the link in the description below to learn more, but for now, let's get back to the video. So the browser in Final Cut Pro is, in my opinion, one of the best features of the app. It really takes organizing, searching, and browsing your media far beyond what the other editing apps can do, yet it keeps it all simple and intuitive. One little known feature in the browser is the ability to select multiple ranges on a clip. That's right, you can select multiple ranges on a clip or multiple clips using a simple keyboard shortcut. Now, why would you want to select multiple ranges? Well, maybe you're logging your footage and during the shoot, the camera operator did multiple takes of the same shot without cutting. He shot in a series. You want to select the in and out point for each portion of the clip that's usable and then either mark it as a favorite or add a keyword to the ranges you've selected. To select multiple ranges, you can use I and O to mark the first range and then Command plus Shift plus I to mark the in point of the next range and Command plus Shift plus O to mark the out point of that range. Repeat those steps across your clip or multiple 
multiple clips and then select all of those ranges and hit F to favorite or Command plus K to assign a keyword. You can also drag those selected ranges to an existing keyword collection if you prefer that method. This is an excellent way of speeding up the process of logging your footage or making multiple selects in the browser and adding them to your edit. All right, so who's heard of three-point editing? Not a lot of editors I know refer to this method of editing, so I thought we should take a closer look. I use three-point editing for almost all of my videos. Because my YouTube videos are usually me talking to camera like I am now, what we call A-roll, and then supplemented with B-roll, three-point editing is an efficient way of laying in B-roll to cover your A-roll. So here you have some A-roll and you've listened back and know you wanna cover a specific portion of the A-roll with a shot of B-roll. Use the range tool to select the portion of the A-roll you want to cover, and then in the browser, mark an endpoint on the B-roll clip you want to add to your edit. Don't bother marking an out point, and you'll see why in just a moment. To connect your marked B-roll clip to your A-roll, you can hit Q, and Final Cut Pro will automatically connect the B-roll clip to your edit, but it will match the duration of the B-roll clip to the duration of the range you selected on your A-roll. It saves you the step of having to mark an out point on your B-roll clip in the browser, and it ensures that you've covered the exact portion of your A-roll you want to cover with B-roll. There's no need to make adjustments to the B-roll clip after connecting it to your edit. This method of laying in B-roll takes a little getting used to, but once you have it down, you can really speed up the process of editing B-roll to cover your A-roll. Three-point editing unlocks the power of the range tool in Final Cut Pro, and it's a great way to speed up your documentary, news, or YouTube content editing. If you've been watching the channel and tuning into my live streams, you know I've been vocal about my desire for Final Cut Pro to use the machine learning technology that's present in the Photos app to, in a sense, log your footage for you. If you had footage with multiple objects in it, like a guitar, a bird, or a car, Machine learning would allow Final Cut Pro to identify those objects so you can use the browser to search for shots containing those objects. The Photos app does this, so why not Final Cut Pro? We know this is possible because Final Cut Pro already has a feature where it can analyze video and still images to determine if they are a close-up shot, a medium shot, or a wide shot. They can also analyze your photo or video media to determine if there is one person, two persons or a group in your shot. Final Cut Pro, after analyzing your media, can automatically create smart collections that filter your entire media library into these specific types of shots. If you've ever noticed a purple bar across your footage in the browser, this means that your footage has been analyzed for keywords. To enable this feature when importing your footage, go to Final Cut Pro, Preferences, and select the Import tab. In the second section of the Import tab, you'll see Analyze Video. From here, you can select the Find People checkbox and choose Create Smart Collection. Once your footage is analyzed, if Final Cut Pro finds people in your shots, it will add a purple bar across the clips, and it will create a new folder labeled People in the sidebar within the event that contains the footage you analyzed. Inside that new People folder, you'll see the smart collections that Final Cut Pro just created. If you want to access this Analyze Keywords feature after importing your footage, you can select the footage you want to analyze in the browser and right-click it and choose Analyze and Fix. In the pop-up menu, you can then choose Find People and Create Smart Collection. Keep in mind that this feature works only with shots that have people in them. If you analyze footage that doesn't contain people, Final Cut won't create any smart collections. You can also access the Analyze and Fix feature in the Modify menu in the upper left in Final Cut Pro. This is a great tool for narrative film editors especially as it automatically analyzes all of your footage to help you search your clips for wide, medium, or close angles as well as one person, two person, or group shots. When you can find your clips fast, that means you stay in the creative flow and hopefully get that first cut done a lot faster. Workflow extensions in Final Cut Pro are often overlooked, but it's a really valuable feature of Final Cut Pro that can make you more productive and efficient. When you're editing in Final Cut Pro, if you have any workflow extensions installed, you'll see a puzzle piece icon in the upper left corner of your Final Cut window. When you click on that, you'll see a list of extensions you can use. One of my favorite extensions is Font Audition, and I use it to type in sample text and then search all of my installed fonts to see which font is best for what I'm trying to do. To add the font and text you like to your edit, just click and drag your selection into your timeline and Final Cut Pro will automatically create a title and you're ready to keep editing. Creator's Best Friend is a great workflow extension that allows you to convert your chapter markers in your edit into text that you can then copy into the description box 
of your YouTube video so your viewers can enjoy chapter markers for all your videos. I'm sure all of you enjoyed that my Anchor sponsorship segment, for example, was denoted using chapter markers. Now, if you skipped it and you have an Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, you should definitely go back and watch it. That Anchor docking station is pretty impressive. So tell me what workflow extensions you're using that I'm missing. I'd love to add more to my arsenal. You can let me know down in the comments. So those are five features in Final Cut Pro you may not have known about, but could be very valuable to your film, documentary, or content creation workflow. And if you enjoyed this video, then I highly recommend checking out my video all about the secret features and keyboard shortcuts that'll make you want to hook up with the magnetic timeline. That's all I've got for this one, kids. Like, share, subscribe, click the bell, and until the next one, I'll see you soon. And don't forget, keep chopping that broccoli.